Hey yo! What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video of Spiritual Sundays, where we explore the weekly gospel and find its message. I'm your host, Matthew Lei, a Huin Cheng from Tiu Nhi Thien Thie, Zhuang Liang, Lian Duan Sinai. I hope you all are doing great this week. Today we're going to be exploring who we are, the devils in our lives, and the power that we have. Alright, let's go ahead and get started with the gospel overview. Today's gospel is a continuation of last week's parables. Today, Jesus speaks to us in more parables. In the first parable, Jesus sets the scene of a good farmer who is setting the good wheat seeds in a field. However, when the farmer was sleeping, the enemy came and planted weeds in the field. When the farmer's assistants discovered the weeds, they asked the farmer if he wanted to remove the weeds. However, the farmer declined here because he was afraid of pulling out the good wheat along with the weeds. The farmer said to wait until the end of the harvest season. By this time, they would be able to distinguish between the good wheat and the weeds. Jesus also gives us two more parables in today's gospel. In the second one, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, that it is the smallest of seeds but becomes the largest of plants, that many birds will come and dwell on its branches. Then comes the last mini parable of today's gospel, where Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to yeast and flour being mixed together, where a woman mixes a mixture of one part yeast and three parts flour. Jesus goes on after this to explain that he's speaking in parables to fulfill the prophecy. After this, he explains to his disciples the meaning of all the parables. In the story of the farmer, the farmer is Jesus, the seeds are his people, and the field is the world. The enemy is the devil and the weeds are the people who do the devil's will. The end of the harvest time is the same thing as when the world eventually ends, and the harvesters at the end of the season are the angels. Jesus says that the angels will throw all the evil people into hell, and will take all the good people to heaven. And that, my friends, is today's gospel. Let's go ahead and unpack it all and break it down. In today's segment, I'll go ahead and break down all three parables, starting off with the first one about the farmer. At the end of the gospel, Jesus explains many things about the story of the farmer. I'm going to go ahead and expand on a few of those things. The weeds in this story are widely believed to be darnel. Darnel is a type of weed that, in its young stages, looks very similar to wheat. This is why it can be accidentally mistaken as wheat when they're both in their young stages. Wheat and Darnell both look the same when they're young. When the farmer says that he wants to give a chance for the wheat to grow, this is like Jesus giving humanity a chance to fully grow. He reminds us not to make a premature judgment on a person, but rather to allow God to make the final judgment at the time of harvest, aka the end of time. No matter where we are on earth, we are always surrounded by both good people and bad people. Jesus reminds us that when we are surrounded by weeds, to not worry and to be patient, to remember that God will sort this all out in the end. It is also important to remember here that sometimes bad people may actually be good wheat that's being choked out by weeds. This is why it's important for us to do our best to fight against the weeds of the world in order to save as many people as possible. Alright, let's move on to the second parable now. Here, what's not important is necessarily the size of the seed, but rather the contrast between when the seed is a youngling, a seed, and a fully grown plant. Mustard seeds are not the smallest seed, nor do they grow into the actual biggest plant, but they do have one of the biggest contrasts in size between when they start off and when they're fully mature. This is meant to show that even the smallest seeds of faith in God can eventually mature into a full budding loving relationship with Him. As a result, we are reminded to nurture those small relationships with God. Even though they may start off small, they may turn into something a lot bigger. And lastly, the bread parable. This one is meant to teach us the power of a small group. When one makes bread, one must have yeast present in order to have the bread rise. However, the amount of yeast present is a lot smaller when compared to the amount of wheat flour that's needed, which is a lot larger. God shows us that even though we may feel like a small part in a big community, we can still have a big impact on the rest of the people there. Some may also have seen yeast as a symbol within itself. In old times, yeast was seen as a symbol of evil. However, today's gospel views yeast in a positive light. This can be a reminder to analyze all the seemingly bad things going on in life. When we dig deep enough into these things, 
we may be able to find the hidden message that God has for us there. All right, that's going to do it today for Break It Down. Let's go ahead and move on to Life Connection. In today's gospel, we learn that we are like the good wheat seeds that are planted. Throughout our day-to-day -day lives, we may face a lot of temptation to sin, our personal weeds. This week, let's try to implement a habit that would help us to either grow as good wheat, kill the weeds in our lives, or do both. Let's make an example of this. My imaginary friend Charles has been in quarantine for a very long time. He's been having trouble connecting to God, and he's having a dwindling patience with his little sister. One thing that we could suggest Charles to do is maybe just to open the Bible every Tuesday and Thursday, and just read one or two lines from the Bible. This could help start him on his better relationship with God, and it's relatively easy enough for him to be consistent with. We could also suggest to Charles to maybe try some breathing techniques, even as simple as breathing slowly and counting from 1 to 10. This would hopefully increase his patience, and therefore increase his patience with his little sister. Alright, now that we've finished Life Connection, let's go ahead and tie it all up with the ending prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord God, thank you for bringing us together this week and closer to you. Please help us to remember to nurture ourselves in a way that we will grow strong and grow closer to you and have a positive impact on others. Please help us to do our best to avoid the weeds in our lives and to continue to grow in unison with the Holy Spirit. In your son's name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Alright, I hope y'all learned a lot of stuff today while going on through this video with me. I hope this video reminded you of all the power that you have, and I wish you all the luck in removing any weeds from your life. Alright everyone, that's gonna do it for me this week. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you liked what you saw, make sure you hit that like button down below, and leave a comment about what you thought about this video. Share this with someone that you think would gain some value, and subscribe and click that notification bell. I'll see y'all in the next video. Take care and God bless y'all. Peace!